It's that time of month again. We are getting our free Unreal Engine Marketplace content. The December content has just released and oh boy, uh, let's dive in and take a look at what we have available this month. Just a quick overview of what's become available for December. Uh, we have mostly modular asset packs. We have the hospitality pack, the modular Gothic temple, although I think on the marketplace and their video is called the ruins. So just in case you get confused with that, a stylized cube world platformer asset pack, a stylized dynamic nature pack. Now this one, whilst it is mostly an asset pack, it does have some pretty cool features, uh, a few things to learn from. If you've seen my videos or content in the past, you'll know that they're the asset packs that I really kind of appreciate seeing and uh, think are going to be most beneficial to the largest number of people, something you can kind of pull apart, see what's happening and hopefully use in your own projects. And then finally, we have the stylized truck pack, which we'll be seeing more of at the end of this video. I'll stick around to see that one. And we usually get a permanently free asset as well. So this is usually an asset which has been free in past months or past years sometimes, and will end up in the permanently free content. This month we're getting the hand-painted environment. And so you can now find that in the permanently free collection and you can download that whenever for free. Just a brief look at the two pure kind of modular asset packs, starting with the hospitality pack. You can see that this is a somewhat kind of modern cafe or canteen type of thing going on here. So if you wanted that kind of photorealistic high fidelity asset pack for a very kind of specific set dressing, then this one will be perfect for you. Likewise, with the modular Gothic temple, you can see some of the assets being demonstrated here on their own video. A nice brief trailer there just showing some of the stuff which is going to be available for you if you're looking for this type of environment in your game. Jumping into the engine then, uh, starting just in order that they appear alphabetically, we have the Kobo Nature Pack, which is the, the one that I mentioned, which could primarily just be a kind of modular asset kit. It has the, the standard kind of trees, rocks, grass, and uh, that kind of layout to make a an island like this. But the most interesting thing, I think we've got a few really nice things here, actually. So if you wanted an example of your kind of stylized grass with the, the wind effect being applied, that type of thing is all going on here. The assets themselves are very unique, so it could be somewhat hard to fit these into a project, but it does have that very unique design, which is uh, quite nice, especially if the developers are going to be producing a lot more asset packs, then of course you can get some of the others and work in different environments into your game or project. Now, the one thing that I really liked for this though, they're using a filter, a kind of stylized post-process effect that I've been a huge fan of for years. And that could be good or bad. I think it means we might be seeing a lot more of these in projects, but I think it provides a really nice kind of stylized effect. So you can see here, everything looks a little bit kind of, um, I don't want to say blurry, uh, but everything looks very kind of fluffy, I suppose would be a better way uh, because of the way that the, the pixels are being distributed. Uh, and that is because of the Kuahara effect, which has been applied to the post process. So if we go to the post process volume, we can see down here, uh, we want to go to the post process materials in the detail settings and not the world settings. And they've actually split this into two different post process materials, which again, super cool, a nice way to have a lot of control over this. And you can see here much better actually what it's doing to these clouds. And um, we've got control over how blurry we want this to be, and we can make it sharper and you can see the effect making much more of an impact as we move around. Uh, and then likewise, we can do the same. We've got the sharpen option. So that was to add the actual Kuahara filter. And then this is controlling the, the sharpness of this as it's being applied. So we can play with these and get some nice effects. And of course, these are material instances. So if we move these into the world, we should be able to see this being updated in real time. And you can really play around with this to get this looking as you want. And I just think you can see here, the idea is it's kind of a, a very painterly style. Uh, the idea is to somewhat recreate oil paintings, that type of thing in your digital scenes. And I think this could just provide some really, really cool looking effects. So obviously in the distance, uh, you can see it takes a lot more effect as you get further away. As you fly over to things, things will start clearing up a little bit more. So you want to play around with this so that hopefully everything looks somewhat uh, recognizable and decent wherever you are. But yeah, I uh, really like that one. It's going to be a really nice useful material to kind of break down and it's not super complicated. So that's why I really like these packs is that we can come in, we can see what some of the materials or code is doing behind the scenes, break this down and reuse it for our own projects. And this is, like I've said, just a, a post-process effect that I've been a fan of for quite a while. Likewise, uh, we've got all of the different grass, the, the water shade is pretty nice as well. If I didn't put the Kuahara up so high, 
that we can't see that anymore. So yeah, a lot of nice kind of stylized things that you, you can take from this project, which I think is, is pretty cool. Next up, we have our stylized cube world platformer. One thing I've noticed in all of the assets this month is they, they all seem to have at least one warning or error message in some cases popping up. So the quality control for the December release is definitely um, not what it has been in the past and definitely not what it has been when I've been submitting content to the marketplace. But anyway, uh, this one again looks pretty good. Some nice assets here. Again, kind of hits that previous issue where this is a very distinct style. Everything's very squared off, even the leaves, the grass. This this isn't going to mesh super well with other assets. So just something to be aware of if you're looking at using this in a game and you wanted a, a desert level as well as this kind of field looking level, then it's likely you're going to need to create something yourself in a similar style. I hope that the developers of this have uh, another asset pack in different kind of zone styles and things. The actual style is really cool. It looks really nice. Again, there's some nice things to take away from this. We've got a fog layer down here, which is a static mesh. So if you wanted to see uh, an idea of implementing the the fog layer like this in a way other than using the exponential fog height, for example, then we have this type of thing here. One thing I will mention is that we do get some code in this pack, but I was a little bit surprised to see that we don't get a playable character, which to be fair, based on some of the, the platforming implementation I've seen in other assets is probably for the best. Uh, you get to fly around, you can see things have got uh, rotation movement, so you can see some code behind things like moving platforms and obstacles. And again, that's all gonna be potentially very useful for people to pick up and learn from. The idea of using the, the vector points and things as visual waypoints, some people might not be aware of that, so that's gonna be super useful for people to to learn from see how that's been implemented most of that is pretty good uh, a couple of things i just wanted to mention really just for reference for people who might be using this just things to consider ways that you could improve it a little bit and just to kind of save on performance and things we've got things here as well actually just before i do go into that we've also got things like breakable crates which I haven't tested because it's specifically casting against a character class and of course they don't provide a character to play around with but I'm sure, again, this is all going to look pretty cool when it's in action. Uh, it's going to launch the character, uh, unbounce the character, and then destroy the crate. So I'm guessing we're going to get a kind of a particle effect here looking pretty cool as well. Might be a slightly older pack since we're using the Cascade system rather than Niagara. So just something to be aware of. The other thing I just wanted to mention is this is one thing to keep in mind with with sort of most plugins and it's not necessarily a bad thing just something to be aware of keep in mind and be careful with and that is the kind of quality of the code that you're seeing so this may seem like a really small thing but it kind of came to mind here in that the blueprint for the coin for example is using the rotating movement component to get all of these different assets moving no, that's fine. Uh, it may not seem like a huge overhead, but even in this scene, there's there's quite a lot of them and you'd be surprised even though it's happening in C++. This isn't, if you look at the code, this isn't like a super performant uh, set of processes going on here to get this rotating constantly at runtime for each of these individual coins. So what you might be better off doing is just coming in, removing the rotating movement component and just adding a really simple material or something, which adds a vertex offset just to rotate the, the material essentially. The player won't know any difference. It's going to feel exactly the same usually when if you set up the collisions correctly uh, because it will be covering the whole of the coin anyway and that's just generally a lot more performance so that's one thing to mention just things like that just keep that in mind when you're working with somebody else's code or uh, an asset from the marketplace like this and then the other thing kind of in line with that that then cropped up when i i looked at other classes to see because i noticed that this one is not just rotating but it's kind of bobbing as well so we've got a little bit of up down movement and that's when i realized we've got this weird thing going on where we've got uh, a location up down boolean being set here and the same thing here uh, and you can see that the pickups are actually called bp underscore power up collectible and so is this one so there's no implementation of kind of inheritance for some reason even though they're doing fairly different things they've got like a base set of mechanics that they can share which would be great in a base class or a parent class but then each of these aren't separated out the static mesh is called coin even though in this case um well it is a coin now but in the world that's been manually changed i guess in world to be a gem so not the most convenient way to set things up that way and again we're still using the rotating movement component uh, and we're just either setting to play or stop a timeline which otherwise wouldn't have been playing anyway if this was toggled on or off so just things to, to consider look through the code that you're working with don't just leave things potentially as they come but overall it looks nice there's yeah a lot of things to to get people started and 
the basics of a, a good kind of platformer, obstacles, moving platforms and things like that. So pretty cool one. Just unfortunate that kind of a lot of things came to mind as like good examples of, I, I think just useful things to know for people who might be working with plugins for their main projects or something, just to keep your game as high quality as possible. And finally, we have the stylized truck pack. From all of the trailer videos, this is probably the one I was looking most forward to. Uh, it is a mix, apparently, of blueprint vehicle functionality and also the general style of the, the meshes looked pretty interesting to me. You can randomize the design a little bit. And just some simple ideas for like fun, quick to make arcadey type games came to mind. The, the actual gameplay of this one isn't too bad. One thing I mentioned before I go too deep into this though, so uh, we'll come back to the gameplay a little bit later. One thing to mention, if you're getting everything downloaded and ready to go, before you add this one to your project, I had a little bit of problem with this. If you're using Unreal Engine 4, make sure that you have the PhysX vehicle plugin installed. So you go to edit plugins. I don't know if it's still showing Unreal 5, but look for PhysX and you'll get the, the vehicle plugin. And for Unreal Engine 5, you need the Chaos vehicle plugin installed. This is why I had a problem is that it does say that on the, the marketplace. I don't remember this being an issue before, but I installed the asset from the marketplace to the project before I installed the Chaos Vehicle plugin. And for some reason, even though I hadn't opened anything, I hadn't been working with any of the classes, I got some errors when I did first, then tried to play it a little bit later, um, and I had to delete everything and re-import it. So just something to be aware, save you a little bit of time. Basically, just make sure that you install the Vehicle plugin before you actually install the asset to your project. Otherwise, you'll end up with a bunch of null references and uh, missing asset links and things in your project here. So that was just one thing that caught me off, something useful to know. Then when I was looking to try and fix that before I realized what the, the issue might have been, just again, going back to code cleanliness or the, the quality of the code you're working with, obviously it's a bit of a running gag with Unreal. Uh, never use tick and never cast to other classes where possible. So we are casting on tick to the player class. Just just move this up here and create a reference um, because we're constantly getting the, the information from the player, the speed and everything to pass along to the HUD, which isn't uh, an incredibly ideal way to do this. And then the other thing, just to go into the player class quickly, which is the chaos truck in this instance, uh, this was a little bit confusing. So there's a bunch of hard coded inputs here. So tab, Q, E, R, T, and so on, all with their own sort of functionality, which again, isn't super convenient. If you wanted to say bind, turning on the, the hazard lights to multiple buttons, you'd need to start implementing all of those here compared to just going into the project settings, going into your input and then creating the input bindings. And this is what really threw me off is that we were getting issues down here saying that certain bindings didn't exist in this project because I started with a completely blank project. So some things are being generated through the config, which to be honest is the ideal way to do it. So that means that if we wanted the arrow keys to be move right, move left and whatever, uh, we can come in here and we can add them all very simply here. Um, and then we now have two new bindings for the movement. Uh, so it just seemed a little bit strange that some of the things were done in the project settings, others were done hard coded inside of the blueprint. But other than that, it, it's kind of fine. And then finally, what I thought would be something just to throw some assets on top of this and create a, a very simple kind of prototype of a kind of arcadey racing game it reminded me how bad the chaos physics are. So this isn't necessarily something to do with the asset, but um, yeah, it it handles like a bicycle carrying a, an elephant would be the first thing that comes to mind. I, I really can't think of another way to describe the balance that this thing has. Um, yeah. So this is the stylized truck though, if you wanted to give that a go and have a play with that. So that is it for December. Uh, what did you think? Was that a good month for free assets? Any of these looking like they'll be likely to make it into your projects, any that you were looking at to buy anyway? And in the comments down below, let me know what you think and if you'll be using any of these in your projects.